Hey everybody, today we have Ozil DeBastos on our show and he has a top rated Apple podcast that has over a million downloads. This guy is crazy full of knowledge. I can't believe all the stuff he dropped on this episode, but we're going to have a lot of fun in this one too. We're going to talk about him being a former break dancer on world tour. We're going to talk about his hammer moves. I get him to tell me the absolute biggest mistake that he ever made in an interview, and we laughed so hard we cried. Um, But in addition to that, the value is amazing. He's going to talk to us about how he uses podcasting as a vehicle to leverage both income and relationships. And it's all about those conversations that he's had that have been able to get him to the next level. And he did it all through podcasting. So you guys aren't going to want to miss out on this episode of Automate to Dominate. Have you ever wished you could eavesdrop on a conversation with a millionaire? My name is Michelle Thompson. I'm a retired project controls engineer and business professor. And that's exactly what I'm going to do in this podcast. I get to ask the questions that everyone else wishes they could. I'm gonna find out exactly how they were able to build their empires through automation and outsourcing. And I'm gonna break it down in a way that helps you build your business to run on autopilot. Don't miss out on Automate to Dominate. Hey everybody, and today's guest is Ozil DeBastos, and he is the owner of Ozil Consulting Group. He has a wildly successful No Permissions Needed podcast. His podcast actually has received a very coveted, new, and noteworthy designation from Apple, and it actually has one of the only five-star ratings out there, has more than a million downloads. This guy is amazing, and I can't believe I get to interview him today. Um, So Ozil's specialty is actually helping businesses maximize their influence and attention through podcasting. You're absolutely going to want to tune in. You're not going to want to miss this. So Ozil, before we get started, can you give us a quick background on how you made it where you are today? Yeah. Well, first and foremost, I want to thank you, Michelle, for inviting me to be on your awesome podcast. I'm super excited to be a part of your podcasting journey. And of course, Thank watching you, you uh, blossom with this podcast. I know you're going to do awesome. I love your energy. So yes, much, much, much love. Um, <laughs> so you're asking me about as far as my, my background, right? Yeah, yeah. How did you, in? yeah, how'd you pick uh, podcasting and how'd you get where you're at? Yeah, what got me to this point, uh, 2020. All right. So I am a former break dancer. Uh, nice. Slash m- musician, yes, I, I was. Uh, I was that guy that was spinning on their he- in, on their heads and on their backs and and, and really and performing all over. So and did you then, like? Did you do a cover for MC Hammer? Uh, you know what? Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> did you really? I, 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 I did a lot of Hammer moves. <laughs> Nice. Yes, Hammer. Yeah, I did all that. Hammer, Kid and Play. Um, I, Michael Jackson was a, a huge inspiration of mine. Uh, as long as Brown. as long as you didn't do Ice Ice Baby, we're all right. No, 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 Ice 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 Baby. No, none of that. Hammer, Hammer Time. It was always Hammer right. Time on my Hammer Time. So yeah, so for, you know, former break dancer, musician. So I spent the bulk of my life uh, making music, being a performer. And after uh, my last band disbanded in 2013, um, I fell in love with this this whole online media and marketing world. Um, started flirting with with blogging and, and creating content, uh, hosting events uh, centered around creative entrepreneurship, uh, and just became super passionate about just creating this lifestyle around creativity and business. And I launched my podcast. My first podcast was in 2015, early 2016. And, uh, and that's actually whenever there was a big, there was a surge of podcasting during that time. And then it kind of died out. And of course, now you're seeing this, this, uh, reemergence of podcasting, uh, which has been amazing. And so from there, I cultivated a, a deeper love for the art of conversation and, and connection via podcasting. Yeah, it gets in your blood, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. It's addicting. It is. It is. Yeah. It's so much fun, too. Like people who haven't like figured this out yet, like I'm telling you, it's the way to go. It's I I mean, have so much fun getting to chat with people all the time that I've never, I would have never gotten to chat with you otherwise. Like, this is well, amazing. I mean, point made, Michelle. I mean, that's the beauty about podcasting. Because of podcasting, I have been able to leverage it as a vehicle to connect with people that I look up to, 
I've, I've, you know, you're going you're to have the same opportunity. I have the opportunity to interview some of the most amazing thought leaders in marketing and branding, uh, people that I read their books, you know, people that, you know, I've, I've would never have a chance to, to connect with. And now through the podcasting, um, I've been able to, to be able to connect and meet and build relationships, authentic relationships with some of the people that I look up to. So that's one of the many benefits uh, of podcasting is definitely this, these conversations and the people that you get to meet uh, through this podcast platform. So it's been, it's been pretty awesome. So when you first started out, mm -hmm. how did you market your podcast? Marketing my podcast in the beginning. Yes. So in the beginning was just sharing the excitement. I think that people read off your energy and feel the energy. So when you come out, and this is what I did, I was just sharing it with, with my current audience at the time, which was friends and family, right? Mom and dad. Uh, and of course, my people on social media. And of course, you know, the more tactical uh, advice and, and some of the things that I did was I would create video teasers before my podcast launched. So I think a lot of the things that for your listeners, when it comes to podcasting, if you're launching any platform is to... Take what the movies do when they release teasers and trailers to cultivate and build anticipation before the launch. And I think that's something that I took early on. And I learned a lot of that, excuse me, when I was a musician and, and just building that anticipation saying, hey, listen, you know, I would do audio clips of some of the interviews. You know, this is the preview of episode one and episode two. So that's how I kind of promoted my podcast is just kind of making sure that I, I let my people know, uh, definitely leverage the social media did a lot of social media marketing. Um, and of course, now with live streaming, uh, there's a lot of, of facets in, in online media that you can use uh, early stage podcasters to, to promote their podcast right out the gate. So that's awesome. I um, hadn't actually thought of that. And of course, I, I should have. So let fast forward 2020. Let's say we were going to do that today. So you do a little video clip. Um, and then you, you upload it onto Facebook to your Facebook page and then you send out a tweet pushing them to mm -hmm. Facebook or do you, do you push them to your web page or I mean, where, where would you push them? Yeah, I think essentially what you want to do is you want to push them to your podcast where they can actually download. You know, one okay. of the things that I've seen really successful podcasters uh, do is whenever they reach, when they do email marketing, they shoot on an email and say, hey, listen, I just released a brand new episode with Michelle. Check it out. And then you have a direct link where they can click it. So you want to make sure that you make it easy for them to be able to click and download, have access to your podcast. And yep. that's like an automatic download. So those are kind of some things that I've, that I've seen with successful podcasters that I've incorporated. But yeah, using live streams and hey, listen, hey guys, uh, you know, if your episode drops on Thursday, on Tuesday, do a live stream. I have a great interview with Michelle that's coming up. I'm super excited. We talked about automation, some of the five tips to automate your business, your platform, and please tune in. It's coming out at 12 o'clock. Look forward to sharing it with you because I think you're going you're to get a ton of value from it. So, you know, doing something like that to build anticipation, to prep the episode, um, I think it's a great way to early on engage your audience way before the episode drops. So I think using that, um, those tools online, uh, it's it's a great way to grow your audience. Yeah, that's absolutely. And it, we, if it makes complete sense to point them to the website because like on, on my podcasting website, for mm -hmm. instance, there's a, um, you know, you can, you can just enter your email right in there and mm -hmm. then it'll automatically send you the next episode. And it's mm -hmm. just a way to, to build your list as, you know, rather than going, you know, directly to Libsyn or iTunes or whatever, right. if they go to the website, then you can capture the email and you're able to then let them know, hey, this is the next episode. So great, great yeah. point. Hadn't really put those two together. <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, kudos to you because uh, a lot of podcasters early on when I do coaching, they don't understand the importance of building an email list. So the fact that you're, you're implementing an email marketing strategy with your podcast uh, it's brilliant because I tell people the email is the lifeline to your audience. So all these platforms could vanish tomorrow, but your email is your direct line to your people, your tribe, right? So the fact that you incorporate and of course, for our listeners out there, if you're starting a podcast, absolutely, hands down, you have to start an email list um, and let people know like, hey, listen, by signing up, you're going to be, you know, you're going to be the first one to get notified when this episode drops. And then, of course, you can add some bonuses exclusively for your email list to make it even more interesting and entice them to sign up. So the fact that you're doing that, and I encourage anybody who has a podcast to to incorporate an email list strategy 
uh, early on. I wish I would have done that earlier, actually. Yeah, absolutely. And for people who maybe don't know, you know, this is like a completely foreign concept to them. Uh, I would check out um, if you, you know, have a very limited budget, maybe MailChimp is a good way to get started for free. Um, I personally use Drip. And the reason that I use Drip is you can start out for free and the cost grows as you grow. So it's really nice. Oh, really? And okay. you can automate so many things to make it just, um, well, run on autopilot <laughs> for you so you don't have to worry about it. So if you're somebody who's just, just getting started and you don't want to get into the tech side of things, MailChimp's probably a really good free option. Mm -hmm. um, if you did want to do a little bit more automation, then I would check out Drip. That would be a good good place to start. So, um, so what steps did you actually take to get that you know five star top rated, coveted Apple Podcast? Right out the gate, Michelle, I I landed a few big guests, uh, so that really helped me spike my my download numbers. So you know the first five episodes were were pretty well known uh, entrepreneurs in the online world. So that's a strategy that I used. Uh, and then also I wouldn't have you on social media marketing. Uh, again, just building up the excitement, a lot of teasers. Uh, I made sure that I really did the heavy lifting in the beginning. So if you're launching a podcast, go heavy on the promo early on. So when the podcast comes out, it's just, you got them hooked, right? You know, they, they want to stick around for episode one, two, and three. So I think for the first, you know, 10 to 20 episodes, you really want to make sure that you promote them uh, consistently. One of the, the biggest struggles that I see podcasters now these days is, is marketing the podcast, right? You release the podcast and you're like, oh, I'm done and you tweet it out. And, but just maintaining the marketing aspect of, of you know, promoting your content is, is a real struggle for content creators and, and, and this, in this case, uh, podcasters. So uh, that's, that's what I did. Uh, just really went out the gates uh, swinging with some big names. Um, Another thing too, Michelle, that it's not talked about in, in our space that I made sure that I just crushed uh, was just to deliver a high quality interview. Because, and this is a huge tip, because if you, you know, a, a lot of podcasters come into this space and, you know, I love the fact that you came prepared, Michelle. I think it says a lot about your integrity and you as, as, as a pro behind the microphone. But you just can't, you can't wing your podcast because you got to understand this is essentially broadcasting. So people went to school for this, you know, and, and there is an essence in an art to being able to conduct an interview. So if anybody, our listeners out there, you know, if you start a podcast make sure that you understand the basics of how to conduct an interview. So early on, those top five guests that I had, they would tell me at the end, dude, like, this is like your first five, ep you know, this is only at five episodes and you deliver this podcast, this interview like a pro. But what they don't know is that I trained and I, I really studied how to conduct an interview. So I didn't look like an amateur going into it, which a lot of podcasters, when they come out, they're like, you know, they don't. And I get it. It's a brand new platform. You're, you're getting used to being, you know, in front of the microphone, behind the mic. You're trying to conduct an interview. You're nervous. I get it. I get it. I, even now when I, I, I get a little nervous every now and then, but you got to be able to be a pro behind the microphone. So that's a huge tip. And that's what I did. And what happened, Michelle, was they went out because I conducted such a, a remarkable interview. They went out and said, hey, listen, this is an awesome interview for you to check out. They blasted it to their million uh, you know, people on, online. And I got a huge wave of people because I, I nailed my interview. So that's a tip that, that people don't talk about. But yeah, if you, if you master the art of the interview, you're going to see a massive growth within your podcast for sure. So where did you go to learn how to interview well? <sighs> ah, great question. So <laughs> I learned, I learned from the greats. I looked at, at TV. I looked at David Letterman. I looked at, uh, you know, Johnny Carson. I looked at one of my favorite interviewers is uh, Howard Stern. Um, you know, I know he's controversial, but he's, I mean, hey, listen, he's, I've seen this guy just conduct some amazing interviews where, where people would just close up and not want to say nothing. And then he just uses humor. And the next thing you know, within like 30, 40 minutes, he disarms them. And then they're just crying on the mic or pouring their heart out. That is a master at interviewing. 
Um, Oprah Winfrey, I believe she's a great interviewer. I like Ellen DeGeneres. I think she's a very comical, casual, conversational style of, of, a, of a broadcaster, you know, of a host. So those are the people. So I make sure that if I see something that I like, um, I incorporate that. And they all have different styles, but there's certain elements they use, the transitions, the conversation. Like you, I could tell it's very conversational. My style is very conversational as well. Um, not so scripted. You want to be prepared, but you also want to allow for conversations to happen. Uh, so those, that's where I learned. So I, was, I learned from that. And I think people, again, the, this is broadcasting, essentially, right? Radio. So I think that if you go to the radio and look for your favorite radio host or your favorite TV host, look how they conduct the interview. Look at them objectively and, and try to see, kind of pinpoint how they ask the questions and, and, and see how they, how they practice that, that art of the interview. Uh, and take those points and bring it into your podcast. And that's basically what I did. Okay. That's yeah. amazing advice. So, yeah. all right. I Thank have you. to go back because yes. first of all, I'm curious. And secondly, everybody listening to this is going to kill me if I don't ask this question. Oh, you want to see my breakdance moves? Is that what it is? You want to that's it. Moves? That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> How did you land those top five? How'd you do that? Yes. So what I, some of it was, um, relation okay i'll tell you what so there was two strategies one of them is and i tell people this all the time if you want to land the big names get your butt to the live events make an effort to go to the live events and and connect with them in person um, so when you say live events what do you mean so okay so conferences that they're speaking at or yeah so i would go there and just build relationships with them so uh, I, I had the honor of a meeting. I don't know if you uh, have you ever heard of Derek Sivers. He yes. is uh, okay. yes. yeah, huge. Okay. Yeah. He was like uh, he was episode number two. He oh was episode my gosh! Two. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Former CEO of CDBaby.com. One of one of the, my favorite interviews. Um, and uh, CD he, Baby was like crazy for the that? time. Oh yeah. Oh, I know. It was, that was amazing. Yeah. yeah as, as a musician, I, I actually so check this out. I had the opportunity to tell him personally how much I appreciated him making the effort and creating a platform for independent musicians because I told him, I was like, I actually submitted plenty uh, of CDs to CD baby because of you. So thank you for doing that for us. So that was really cool kind of to tell my hero, uh, you know, that I really appreciate it that he did that. So I met him at a, uh, excuse me, I met him at a live event and then I, uh, so a lot of those actually three out of five, I met at live events. And then the other two, I was tweeting them out. I was constantly tweeting them, building relationships online. So when I went for the ask, they said yes. Um, so that's another thing too. So if you want to get a big name, engage with them in the beginning, retweet them, comment on Instagram, uh, hit them up with a, a video message on Instagram. Say, hey, listen, just want to let you know that I really do appreciate everything. You know, just go and just build that uh, relationship. So whenever you come back and say, hey, listen, I would love to interview you at this podcast. Would you be interested? Um, nine times out of 10, they'll say yes. And that's what, exactly what I did. So awesome. build relationships, get to the live events. And then, of course, uh, time, timing. Uh, I think if there's, they're releasing a book or they have uh, a product or service that they're about to launch, uh, look at that. And a lot of the times they want to be on podcasts to promote their service or their book and the product. So um, that also helps out as well is to kind of get in there and say, Hey, listen, I would love to promote the book that you're coming out with. Would you, would you be interested in being on my podcast? And uh, I would always get a yes. And I still yeah. use that strategy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Podcasts are kind of evergreen, right? Like, you know, exactly. you, you put a, you put a Facebook post out and it's gone 12 minutes later <laughs> and you know, you put, you know, but a podcast it's, it's out there forever. It's evergreen. What's I'm glad you mentioned that. One of the cool things about podcasting is that they, if you have somebody who just stumbles upon your podcast, what's going to happen is they're going to go back and binge. They're going to go back and go back to episode one. So that's the cool thing about podcasts. When I do interviews like this and I get discovered by uh, a different audience, they'll just, I'll see a spike. I'm like, whoa, what did that happen? And it's because people want to check out what you got going on. And next thing you know it, they're going back. And I asked him, I said, yo, I said, what happened? Said, oh, yeah, I listened to like episode, you know, 
150 and then I just went back and just listened to all of them like oh cool well thank you for all those up you know for those downloads so that's another thing about podcasting is that it's definitely evergreen and people will binge on all your episodes if they fall in love with the podcast and your message absolutely it's the driving way to work to read blogs <laughs> that's right it, well said well right? said A yeah bit. So yeah what's the funniest thing that's ever happened to you on a podcast <laughs> so Okay, if you can't pick one, I'll I'll take two or three stories. I mean, I'll take two. <laughs> well, I have one that's pretty memorable. Uh, I it was episode fifty something, and uh, I remember I was conducting the interview, and it was at at a part where the the guest was it was uh, pouring his heart out. It, it got it got really deep. Right, it got really really deep, uh, and he was sharing this story. Um, and I was just, you know, I was like, okay. And I was just listening. And, and uh, I mean, he kept on going and going. And it just got more intense and more intense. And I was playing with my, I was, for some reason, I was just, I don't know what, I was fidgety. And I was moving my chair back, right? I was like, I kept on moving it back, moving it back. And bam, I fell from the chair. And the dude was like, uh, 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 what, 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 what happened? What happened? And I completely fell backwards. I start, I was trying to like contain my laughter because I was in like the conversation. I was in what he was saying. It was such a, like a serious, it was just, and, uh, and he actually started laughing. And I said, dude, I said, I said, I'm sorry. I said, I can edit this out. I just fell off my chair, <laughs> out of my chair. I just fell down <laughs> and he started laughing. So, uh, most embarrassing funniest thing that yeah, definitely so from there I started standing up with all the, all the interviews I stand up now I don't even sit down so uh so anyway so that was that was pretty funny uh and, and very it was embarrassing <laughs> yeah. we laughed about it afterwards so that was cool yeah that's always like at the time you're like horrified and then six months later uh, it's like the joke no, at I, every I, party I cannot right? believe and the fact Guys, that it was like such an, this. right right and the fact <laughs> it was such an intense conversation i mean if it was just like right now we're laughing and i felt ah, oh, whatever but it was such an intense conversation i was like you gotta be kidding me out of all places at all points of the conversation for you to fall off your chair uh it, it had to be that intense. right you, i'm yeah. like come on man Way to pick the climax, man. That's great. Exactly right. Exactly <laughs> right. <laughs> so that's one of them. Let's say you have somebody who's just starting out in podcasting, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How are they able to monetize that podcast? The quickest and just the the easiest way to do uh, to monetize your podcast is is affiliate marketing. It is signing up. Uh, whether your podcast is centered around software or your podcast is, let's say your podcast is about like a daily book review, uh, signing up to Amazon um, to be able to include affiliate links that are uh, tagged back at those books. Uh, but yeah, affiliate marketing is the easiest way. I started monetizing my podcast within the first five episodes just because, because I was mentioning books. So I was like, hey, you know, this, this book is, you know, it's an amazing book. Uh, anything you want by Derek Sivers, check it out. And, you know, people enjoyed it and people clicked on it. So yeah, I was making a few bucks, you know, and it was, it was enough for, to pay hosting service. So at that time I was like, okay, cool. 20, 25 bucks, you know, it's paid, you know, paying for my, for my lips and hosting service. And I'm like, okay, this is cool. So that was a big win for me, but yeah, definitely affiliate marketing is, is the quickest way. So I always, I recommend and suggest mm -hmm. that when you launch a podcast right out the, right out the gate is definitely have affiliate marketing links uh, set up. And uh, brand sponsorship deals, you know, those are the ones. And those are, are a little, it takes a little time for you to get there because those, they start looking at numbers a little bit, maybe like 5,000 downloads and above. And then you can kind of start peaking interest. However, I've coached some people where they have 20 episodes and they land, you know, $500 brand sponsorship deals right out the gate uh, with just a few episodes. Um, that happens when you're very targeted, when you have a very niche podcast, let's say if it's a fishing podcast and you say, Hey, this is a fishing podcast. And I go to local businesses that are, are about, you know, that are fishing companies and brands. Yeah. They're going to say, absolutely. You know, Hey man, I got, you know, 150 targeted, um, listeners that want your stuff. Uh, they definitely, it, it piques an interest and, and they're definitely willing to, to invest in podcasts, especially now more than ever. I think it was like $73 million of advertising uh, 
was was invested last year in 2018. So that's a lot of money. And oh, that's wow. looking, yeah, and it's going to continue to grow. So a lot of advertisers are now looking for niche-oriented podcasts to to market their service and, and their products. So uh, it, it's a good thing for podcasters like ourselves. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So this podcast is kind of like all about systems and, mm-hmm. and things like that. So do you have any systems that you use to help mm-hmm. you automate some of the work with your podcast? Yeah, I, I probably need your help on that. Um, so some of the, you know, we were talking about the, before we press record that one of the, the challenges is automating. And uh, that's something that we're going to continue seeing uh, being a bigger topic in the podcasting in the content creation world period. But some of the things that I've used, um, of course, I use like buffer social be to automate my posts. Uh, that's just basically just blasting on all platforms. Um, Audiogram, which is more like a feature. Are you familiar with Audiogram, Michelle? No, actually. I no, okay, heard okay. That one. So those are like just like audio clips that you can use. So that's more for kind of social media marketing. Okay. Um, and then also, also the Lipson. Like I, I use Lipson for your hosting. A lot of the hosting companies now have scheduling features where right. you can actually schedule. I'm not sure if you use that. Yeah, I'm using Lipson. I, yeah. It's, perfect, it's really okay, nice because then I can record it and like launch it three months later and I never right. have to think about it again. Right. You submit it, you submit the time, right? Yep. And then you're just, you, you set it and, and you let it go. So, excuse me. Uh, so that's how you, uh, that's how I do it. But I just, it's just very basic stuff that I do. Uh, but just a lot of it's just social media, like Buffer, Social Bee. Um, I know there's things like Repurpose uh, and of course, lips and, and then I use a lot of the features that are on Facebook to schedule certain things, but I'm trying to get better at automating. Um, a lot of my podcasts are topical. So I know one of the things that with automation, it's, you have to be careful because you want to make sure I can't have an interview and then they're promoting something and I automate it like three months in advance when they release it and talk about, it. you know what I mean? So right. uh, I have to be very, very careful about that. But yeah, it's something that uh, I think I'm going to be using a lot more when it comes to, to promoting. Uh, I think it's going to be huge for marketing uh, podcast episodes uh, for, for all podcasters. Okay. So I think you already answered this, but I'm going to ask it again. So maybe you can yeah. come up with the second coolest person. Who's the coolest <laughs> person you've gotten to interview? Oh my God. Yes. Okay. So, uh, I, okay. So the interview, so the official interview, I, I really enjoyed Derek Sivers, uh, because building up to that interview and I've, I've had the opportunity to interview some of the, the, the biggest social media names and, people that were on Shark Tank and, and New York Best Time Seller. So I, it's been awesome to just to, to be able to interview some of the most brilliant minds in, in this community. But Derek Sivers was uh, just a really cool cat uh, that was just, you know, down to earth, uh, you know, millionaire. And he just delivered a lot of great stories. You know, uh, after the podcast progressed, it got really tactical but going back, and he was episode two, I think he was episode two. Um, going back to him, he was very just story oriented. And he just shared so many golden gems and so many amazing stories. Uh, so he definitely is the one that stands out. Um, and then I did an unofficial interview with uh, Tim Ferriss uh, at ah. South by Southwest, um, which I was so upset. Uh, talk about, so you, we talked about the funniest and, and, and the most... Uh, 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 like what the hell moment was like, I interviewed him. It was, uh, for 10 minutes. It was short. It was like, yo, I, I got to bounce. But he was like, we had a really good rapport. We're talking about uh, wine and cocktails. Nice. And, and yeah, 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 yeah. So, and then we started talking about, you know, entrepreneurship and, and marketing, et cetera. And I was like, yo, I said, can I, can I interview? And I had actually my, my zoom recorder my hand record. I said, can I record? He's like, yeah, man, for sure. He's like, I don't have a lot of time. I was like, no, no, it's cool, man. I said, I'm heading out as well. So I hit record and uh, he was flowing. We had this amazing conversation. I was asking him questions and it was very conversational. And then I looked down. Oh no. Yes. You already know. You already know. Yeah. Walk, walk, walk. You hit play instead of record. Pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. The SD card was was completely full and I hit it and and didn't record at all. So I was very, very upset. I reached out to him online, uh, but, you know, he's, you know, Tim Ferriss now. He's super, super busy. He got massive, you know, uh, and it wasn't able to get him on the podcast. But he's, uh, that was one that, uh, that was just like a big, 
the one that got away. The big whammy, yes, <laughs> the one that got away. So, but he was a that was a great that was a cool interview uh, because I was in person and I got to really pick his brain and it was such uh, it was like two friends. I mean, we really hit it off. Yeah. Uh, so that was a really fun uh, fun interview. And I think that's um, the unofficial one. The unofficial, the the one that got away. The one that went, <laughs> but, yeah, the one that got away. But uh, I think people tend to learn through stories so much better than like, you know, tactical. I mean, like yeah. automation, that's, <laughs> that's a relatively boring topic, right? <laughs> but, you know, when, when people match it up with, with stories in real life, all of a sudden it becomes reality. Oh, hey, right. I get it. I right. get it. I get it. So, yeah, that, that had to be, and that was actually one of, uh, Derek was one of uh, Tim Ferriss's. That's right. Like top podcast too. So. Oh really? I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So he he's actually. Him. Yeah. Yeah. He's actually. Derek was such a cool podcast for him that he actually Derek's in Tool of Titans that uh, the book that Tim okay. Ferriss wrote. Yeah. Okay. I so, haven't yet read that book, by the way. Oh, uh, I'm I'm gonna mail you a copy, man. So. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, I know it's massive. All his books are massive. I mean, I've I've read pretty much all his books except. Those yeah, but you know it's. Too. You know what's cool about Tool of Titans is like it's five minute chunks. Like okay. you, it could be like a, this is a little bit crude, but it could be a bathroom reading book because you can like, and then once you go through it once, then you just use it for like references. Like I have mine like all highlighted and, and uh, dog eared and I know some mm -hmm. people are going to freak out, but, <laughs> and then, you know, when I'm looking for something, I'm like, oh my gosh, what was that quote? You know, oh, there it is. Or yeah, real cool yeah. book. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely got to check that one out for sure. So if you had to pick two people that helped you become the success that you are today, mm. who would those two people be? Could be any space, doesn't have to be podcasting space, doesn't have to be music space, anybody. Wow, uh, two people, man, Michelle, that's a hard question because throughout my years uh, up to this point, I've had a lot of mentors and and coaches. Uh, one of them was, uh, his name was Michael O'Neill. He has a podcast called The Solopreneur Hour. And he was, about four years ago, he was my coach. And he was actually the one who really had, had me hone in on my podcasting uh, gift. Like, I really wanted to hone in on the interviewing. And he was one that really pressed me. Uh, he saw, like, he's like, you're really good at this. He's like, you really, but he also kind of honed me in and gave me some really tips. Um, some great tips to, to kind of better myself as a podcast interviewer. Uh, so he was somebody who kind of stands out and, and, and is a huge inspiration. Um, and then, uh, believe it or not, you know, my mother, my mother has been a, a super behind my, you know, she's been down for, for Team Ozeal for a long time, uh, ever since my, you know, all my music performances. Uh, you know, my mom never, um, cause I was, I was, I'm a college dropout. So I dropped out of college to pursue music and I dropped out at a time where I had like a year and a half left. So everybody's like, what, Benny, what are you doing, man? Just finish up and just do your music. Right. And, I was, and, I, and at the time I was like, look, I, I, we had an opportunity to, to, you know, to tour and do a lot of shows. So I was like, no, nah, I, I just got to do this, man. I'm sorry. I'm just not filling in. And I've never been a school kind of guy. Um, I've been, always been this kind of creative rebellious, uh, character who always wanted to pursue passion and creativity and, and performance, which is the thing that excites me, Michelle, about podcasting is podcasting has allowed me to translate my passion as a musician, being behind, I was the lead singer, I was behind the microphone into the podcast. So it just made total sense for me to jump into podcasting uh, to get, you know, my friends, oh yeah, you couldn't get away from the microphone, man. Of course, of <laughs> course you, you know, you, you would have, uh, you would have podcasted. So but my mom, going back to, to the question, yeah, my mom was, was a huge supporter, never criticized me. She just said, hey, listen, as long as, as you're doing what you love, and I think she saw the light uh, in me when I was on stage and organizing these events for creative entrepreneurs and, and all that. And it really was never about the money. I had opportunities to make money and go corporate and never did. I was always kind of like, look, I want to pursue this. This is what I love. I love marketing. I love people. I love connection. I love creating content. Um, I love performing behind the mic. Um, and she never criticized me. And she's always been a huge supporter. And every, you know, birthday, she reminds me, I, I still, I'm still supporting you 100%. I love you. And uh, so she is definitely an inspiration of mine and someone who's never left my camp. So 
Uh, shout out so to there, Mom. You. there you go. There you go. Mother's Day. You got to get her a shirt that says Team Ozeal. Ah, <laughs> yes. That's a great idea. That's a great idea, Michelle. I love that. I love that. Yeah. My mom was uh, very much the same way. I um, played basketball through college, and I went to college about two hours away. And, you know, even – I mean, she never missed a game in high school. She – I don't – Unless we were playing in like Boston <laughs> or Miami, she didn't miss a game for, um, uh, you know, in college either. And we were terrible. <laughs> we were like, I'm sure it was painful for her to have to watch. And yeah, funny, funny story. So it's my mom's like 50th birthday. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna do something like awesome for her because I knew she would be in the crowd. Mm. So we went and we got like 50 red roses. And so I had the whole team line up with like all the roses and we brought her out on court in, uh, in the middle of the court for halftime and sang happy birthday to her. And she told me later it was the absolute worst thing I could have ever done to her. Cause I just told the entire audit- auditorium that she was 50 years old. <laughs> I didn't even think about it like that. I just committed like the ultimate <laughs> sin. Right. Right. It's like, not the 50. Oh, don't tell I'm like, that. I'm like, oh, this doing? is going to be so good. Oh, and she's oh. like, oh, my God, you just told how many thousands of people <laughs> when I was 50 years old. That's awesome. That's yeah, awesome. So anyway, so uh, I would recommend <laughs> not doing that. Right, right, right. Just, just yeah. stick with the T-shirt. Let's exactly, go. exactly. There you go. That's right. <laughs> That's awesome. So if you could give an inspiring entrepreneur just one book to read, which one would it be and why? Yeah. So many books because I, I, I read a lot and lately I've been doing a lot of audiobooks. But if there's one, man, Michelle, that's a hard one. But the one that was, and you'll appreciate this, uh, speaking of the devil, we were one of the ones that really changed uh, the game for me. The book was, uh, there was two books, the, the Alchemist, just because it was aligned with, with what I was going through as a musician, kind of like this, uh-huh. like, let's pursue your bliss, right? Follow your bliss. Um, but the one that really stood out that changed my whole perspective on life was, was the four hour work week. Okay. Yep. Me yeah. too. By 10 that's, yeah. That's that's a, I mean, that's how I got the bug. <laughs> really? Really? For you? So, yeah. so me too. So, so I think, so for anybody who is interested in, in seeing this alternative way of living, because I, I had read books like classics like Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And early yep. on, I, I, I caught the entrepreneurial bug. And I was really intrigued by this whole world, um, mm-hmm. you know, even before I, I quit college. Uh, and I think that was the catalyst. Uh, because when I pursued my, my, my music, I was like, you know what? There's that world. I want to be a part of that. And when I, I, I read 4-Hour Workweek, I'm like, that's, that's what I want to do. Like, it's, that's, I can't. It's funny that you said uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Because Rich Dad, Poor Dad was kind of the book that, showed me oh hey this is kind of like could be possible yeah. right and there's a there's a different world out there uh-huh. right so you kind of get the you know the mind blow moment right but then you read the four hour work week and you're like oh my god this is yeah. how you do it yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. no longer you know this mind blow moment it's reality and yeah. like everybody and their brother goes to brickworks india and hires a ba <laughs> right right i know right yeah and his whole no philosophy way. and his whole philosophy of like just living life right about the fact that you know right. you don't have to wait until you i remember the one that stood out was like you don't have to wait until you retire to vacation and enjoy life yeah and, I think and he that really was, gets tactical yeah like, that was so huge was like it's it's literally a complete shift in mindset it's yeah, a complete totally. shift in everything that we've been taught our whole lives, totally. right? You know, from, from kindergarten on up is, you know, be a good little boy and go to school and get A's and then go get the corporate job and get the corner office and, and trade your hours for dollars and, you know, get a successful family and you'll be just fine, right? right. And then rich dad, poor dad comes along and, you know, throws a wrench and all that because he's like, right. oh, yeah, my dad was, you know, was he a teacher or a principal I don't remember I think he was a principal Mm -hmm. and uh you know and he's like yeah I wanted to name the book why you should never go to college (laughs) and his and his like uh his auditor or um his editor wouldn't let him name it that but then but then you get you know the reality of rich dad poor dad right Mm -hmm. because you got Tim Ferriss who read the book and then figured out Mm -hmm. hey look we can take this little tiny pill and market it 
online and sell it and I only have to work four hours a week and I'm able yeah. to travel the world and do whatever I want. Right. And I remember being in college reading that going, holy crap, that's yeah. what I want. I yeah. don't want yeah. the corner office. Same. Yeah, yeah, you know? same. So, Same. Sorry, so you I went and off I on a little bit of no, no, no. There, but. See, see, and I, it feels good. I mean, I know I wasn't the only one, and I think that that book right there. I mean, I just it nailed it for me. So for your listeners, yeah, definitely um, get that get that book because it completely changed my whole world. And after that, I was bitten by the bug and never looked back. Um, I just couldn't. I couldn't look at life the same way. I, as a matter of fact, I went and I did work a corporate job for a bit, and it just. I felt, I was like, no, this is not for me. I can't do it. And I, I bartended just because I wanted to be around people, uh, but I couldn't do the just the cubicle gig anymore uh, yeah. because of that book. So, and actually I told Tim that. I actually- Thank I, you, I, Tim. You yeah. ruined us for life. Yeah, I know, right? Exactly. That four you hour ever listen to this podcast? <laughs> I mean, he's, he's, he's definitely, he's the man. He is the yeah. man. So that's definitely a book that I highly recommend anybody. That one, and of course, the rich dad, poor dad, cash flow, uh, quadrant. Cashflow I think quadrant. Was, yeah, yeah. That was, that's just a follow up. That was a great book. Yep. And, did you ever uh, play, uh, did you ever play the game cash flow? No, I wanted to buy that. I know. I wanted to play Oh my game. gosh. It's like, yeah. it's, it's so much fun. It's yeah, so it you is. get the board game, but then you can also get, um, like, I think they actually, you can put it on your like iPad now and play cash flow really? and they, yeah, they have cash flow 101 and then cash flow 202, which cash flow okay. 202 goes into like investing. Like if you wanted to buy options and mm -hmm. puts and calls and all kinds of crazy stuff, but okay. it, it makes it fun. Yeah. There's this little like rat that talks to you and he's like, that was a bad deal. Oh really? Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Is, is he still is he still out, Robert Kiyosaki? Is he still putting out content? And uh, you know, I think I think he's actually. like outsourced it a lot. Okay, so I think okay. I think he's like joined with other people, and he's just putting his name on their stuff. Okay. So he's like the Thomas Kincaid of. He's kind of like the back. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I did because of that book. I actually did the whole multi-level market. Actually, that was my first business. Actually, one of. Actually, before that, I was selling breakdance videos and all that bootleg style. But after that, when I read the book, um, I, I started getting into multi-level marketing, uh, oh, okay. which didn't I wasn't successful at. But I did <laughs> learn a lot about marketing and, and entrepreneurship because, I mean, if, if you want to know about the hustle, I mean, those people yep. hustle. I'm not I'm not a big fan of it, but I've seen people are that are super successful. But respect, I mean, because those uh, that infrastructure teaches you a lot about, you know, sales and marketing and really being your own boss. So, um, you know, because of, of that book, I got into network marketing. Again, I didn't, didn't have any success, but I tried it out because of Robert. You like, like, all, like all the rest of us, I think I was in like two or three MLM. But you were? All, yeah. all crash and burns. All yeah. yeah. But, yeah, it's but I will say they were not failures because the things that I learned yeah. from them has turned me into who I am today, yeah, you know, you and go. I would have never, I'd have never learned how to build, uh, you know, a web page. I would have never figured mm -hmm. out how to, That's right. um, I, you know, I would have never figured out marketing. I would have never uh -huh. figured out all these other things that, you know, as a business owner, yeah. um, you take for granted. Right? Yeah. It's yeah. The education. Right. Exactly. No, the educational component is, is definitely, uh, by far one of the reasons why anybody should even consider joining because they definitely support you and, and you learn from some of the best salespeople. So, uh, yeah. So you and I have the, the same kind of common story that our background is very similar. That's funny. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. I just, you know, can't do MC hammer moves. I've like, you know, <laughs> It'd be I got you. I got you. I got you. Okay. I got you. Right. I got you. See, I got you. see this? It's like incredibly pale. And there's that's that? Where, yeah, it's, it, that means no rhythm right there. No rhythm. <laughs> oh, you're awesome. Uh, yeah. you, have to, you have to put me on a basketball court instead. Uh, there you go. There you go. That's right. Exactly. Okay. Got you. So, all right. So if you could put anything on a billboard, yes. what would it be? That's a great question. So ironically, it's the name of my podcast, but I'll throw it in there just because it's a declaration. It would be no permission needed, create what you desire and live it. That's it. That's it. Because that's, that's kind of my, my, my mission is, is to really help people, inspire people to give themselves permission to do what they love and, and live their truth. And I think now with the internet and now with the technology that we have, 
um, to build these authentic relationships, to be able to create businesses from all kinds, right? Uh, whether it's drop shipping or an online platform or coaching, um, there's so many things that we can do now that there's really no excuse uh, to do the thing that you love. Um, the education's out there, the, the YouTube, I call it YouTube University. So if you want to be a musician, yeah. you can literally learn how to play a freaking drum or an instrument on YouTube. So no permission needed. It's just a matter of just saying yes to yourself and saying, look, I'm going to pursue this and do the damn thing. So that's what I, that's, that's my, my billboard yeah, right there. You're absolutely right. I saw, like I saw a commercial last week, I think, and I, it just blew my mind. So this guy, he was a high school dropout, decided he wanted to become a nuclear engineer, didn't have money to go to college. You know what he did? He YouTube the crap. Really? No joke. Wow. He YouTubed it and learned everything he possibly could about nuclear engineering wow. and then just went to college and just blew through all the tests. And I think he did it in like six months, a year. He just passed them all. And now he's like Same. working for this like huge company and he YouTubed it. Yep. So, so screw college, man. YouTube it. university, that's baby. Right. That out. Where'd you graduate from? YouTube university. What? what? That's right. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Test it's accredited. Test. It is. It's right. Credited. Exactly. It, it should be a thing. Come on, YouTube. It should, be a it, thing. should, it should be a thing. I'm telling you. See, there's uh, your next million dollar idea. There you go. That's YouTube, right. Oh. YouTube accreditation. There you go. There you go. That's right. That's right. Noted. Yeah. So <clears throat> I know that now you've kind of moved into coaching people mm -hmm. on, you know, how to do podcasts and things <coughs> and if somebody wanted to work with you, how would they do that? So you can go and reach out to me at uh, ozealmedia.com. And more specifically, you can email me directly at ozeal at ozealmedia.com or find me on Facebook. Uh, look, um, think ozeal, T H I N K ozeal. Uh, is where you can find me on Facebook and on Instagram and on Twitter. And yeah, just simply uh, DM me and let me know if you're interested in, in starting a podcast. Uh, I started the Ozeal Consulting Group uh, about a year ago and working with a lot of solopreneurs, a lot of uh, coaches, a lot of uh, consultants, people that are looking to leverage the power of podcasting to not only expand and, and their message globally, but also to, to build clientele, to use it as a marketing instrument to market their, their services and their products. So um, it's been just amazing seeing that now. I'm actually working with uh, some educational groups here in, in Houston, Texas, where I reside. Uh, and now I'm seeing a lot of my clientele are, are corporate people, the corporate companies that, that you, know, you wouldn't think would be interested in starting a podcast are now plugging in no pun intended, uh, to the world of pod. <laughs> ah, you see what I did there? See what I did there? Uh, yeah. uh, see what I did there? Um, they're, they're, they're plugging in because they, they see the benefit of podcasts. And, and now more than ever, you know this, Michelle, I mean, you, you have to have a media mindset uh, to be able to uh, share your message and, and to really compete in, in, a, in a market that's it's all about creating content, valuable content, and, and, and you know, giving value to, to an audience. And as a result, you can get clientele, uh, you can build brand awareness, brand authority if you want to be a speaker. And I'm working with actually a speaker now who says, I just want to use my podcast as a way to get better at speaking. What people don't realize is that when you start a podcast, you're learning how to be a better communicator. Like, you're really, we're learning a skill set here. Uh, it's just not like all the results of building brand and all that is amazing and, and these relationships, but internally selfishly if we're learning how to be better speakers which is the reason why now speakers are saying well let me train my voice that's what you're doing let me train my voice to be a better to articulate my message more so i can hone in to where when i hit the stage i'm a rock star so now i'm working with with speakers that are, are leveraging and using podcasts as an educational platform to develop their skill set as a communicator as a leader so that's been just amazing to see uh, people come out to me, uh, come up to me and ask me for, for podcast coaching and consulting. So that's where I'm at, Michelle, just kind of working with here locally. And um, I'm going to try to tap into the Latin market as well and, and, and see there's different markets all over uh, that are looking to leverage podcasting. So it's only going to continue to grow. And I'm just excited because, you know, voice matters. And I think that 
now more than ever, uh, businesses and brands need to develop a voice marketing strategy. The fact that you're doing it uh, and the fact that you can talk about automation and things that can help business owners and entrepreneurs uh, is just amazing platform. And you're definitely going to see a lot of results uh, along with everybody else who I've been helping with, with podcasting. So that's where I'm at. Awesome. And I, I think yeah. one of the things that uh, excites me the most about podcasting is <clears throat> it's not crazy regulated yet, right? It's, uh, it's still kind of this, even though it's been around for, for quite a while, um, it, it hasn't been, you know, like with, you know, you have Google algorithms and you have, you know, if you're trying to market on Facebook, you have to follow their rules and, and there don't seem to be a whole lot of stringent business rules around podcasting. Like you get to be creative and do what you want and you don't have um, somebody looking over your shoulder going, you can't call right. it that, <laughs> right. you know, kind of a deal. And so I think, you know, businesses are going to figure that out. They're going to figure mm -hmm. out that it's this huge, wide open field that they're able to get their message out there without yeah. a whole lot of pushback just mm -hmm. yet. So, Absolutely. And so for yeah. you, that's like amazing to be able to be in the space where you're able to, to take those people who don't know how to do it and, and turn them into just absolute rock star success stories mm -hmm. modeling after what you've done. Yeah. So, yeah, thank you. You're seeing a lot of people, to kind of piggyback on what you just said, you're seeing a lot of uh, radio broadcasters and celebrities, uh, uh, even e you know, ESPN, big companies like ESPN, big brands are going into the podcasting. They're doing subset, like they're doing sub shows in addition to TV because, you know, podcasting gives them that exclusive, you know, platform where they can share something they can't you know, right. talk about because of the regulation on TV. So they're going to podcast to be like, look, I just kind of want to like loosen up my tie and just talk some, you know, spit. So, so, right. you know, that's how they're going. I so, want I mean, to I be Harold great. Stern on ESPN <laughs> right. and this that's is right. how I do it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh, there I'm sorry, go. Howard Stern. Why did I say Howard Stern? Yeah, 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 exactly. So. No, exactly. So that, that's what it is. And, you know, Howard Stern now, you know, he's, and he was the one that was really kind of, um, he was a trendsetter because he was talking all that mess on, you know, regular just commercial radio. So he was like, forget this, I'm going to satellite. Uh, and he's happy there. I mean, he's, he's, he's not going to jump into the podcast. He doesn't need podcasting. But for others, right. you know, they go to podcasting, you know, to talk about uh, exclusive content and things where they can be themselves and be creative, as you said, to speak freely. And which is the reason why, you know, uh, I was looking at a list of corporate companies who are starting podcasts who have podcasts i mean mcdonald's has a podcast really? uh, trader jo trader joe yes it's called actually it's a great what in the world do they talk yeah. about on mcdonald's so, I, I haven't checked it out um but i think it's called the secret sauce which i think is a great name killer name yeah um, that is yeah it's a killer name so but they have a podcast trader joe's has a podcast sephora has a podcast uh G okay i can see sephora that makes sephora. sense like i yeah. mean but I mean, yeah. how are you going to, I see, I got to check out the McDonald's thing now because I want to know, now they're going to teach me how to make a quarter pounder with cheese. Hey, there you go. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> right. Some exclusive I don't stuff. don't know baby. what they're talking about. Secret sauce, baby. Yeah. So uh, I think it's just amazing, you know, to see, you know, companies and big brands uh, jump on the podcasting uh, wagon, not just for the sake of the trend, but for, because they do see the power uh, it has to, to leverage and, and maximize uh, the voice of the brand. So uh, we're going to continue doing that and as a consultant, as somebody who's super passionate about podcasting, who got in it early on when it wasn't a thing. And now to see it just kind of blossom, take over and see a lot of people get into the space. All right, it's exciting to me. Somebody asked me, like, what do you feel is going to be it's saturated? Man, everybody's a podcast. It's like, yeah, yeah, true. But the ones that are committed to the art form, the ones that are committed to conducting great interviews, the ones that are committed to consistently promoting their, their podcast and marketing their podcast and, and showing podcasts, you know, and, and letting other people how podcasting is done correctly. I think those are the ones that are going to, to uh, stick around for a while. So um, there's definitely some, you just have to, you have to be committed just like any other platform. So it's exciting for, for, for podcasters, which I'm excited for you. The fact that you're, you, you know, you're on this and it's what episode three you said, did yeah, you say? This episode is episode three. three. Episode three. Yeah, baby. Yeah. 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 You made the top 10. I know. Yes. 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 I, I, I want to be that cool dude. When somebody asks you like, who's one of the cool interviews? I'm like, you know, 
I met a break dancer, you know, musician. That's right. I met a guy who fell off his chair. At the who fell off his climax. chair. At the <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I want to be that one. I, I want to be mentioned. But uh, no, all jokes aside, I think this is awesome that you're doing this. So. Oh, thank you. Hey, Super Ozil, I, know, I know we went a little bit over time, so I just want to thank you so much yeah. for taking the time. And I, I, like, I know time is probably our most valuable asset. And so you have dropped some crazy, incredible knowledge bombs on us. And so hopefully everybody that listens to this is able to take those golden nuggets and implement it into their life and hopefully get a hold of you and uh, be able to, to move and grow. Thank you very much, Michelle. I really do appreciate it. Oh, yeah. Thank you. So everybody, just one more time. Don't forget, you can catch up with Ozil on his website at ozilmedia.com. That's O-Z-E-A-L. M-E-D-I-A dot com. And we will see you guys next time. Thank you for tuning in to the Automate to Dominate podcast at www.awesomeoutsourcing.com slash podcast. My, 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 my name is Michelle Thompson. Thompson.